Not yet. Okay. So I'll do it this evening. Okay. Um, oh, uh, of course. You have the new assignment. <coughs> How many of you have seen it? Very few. Okay, let's take a look. Do you have a good view? Um, on the internet, really. Oh dear. Okay. Go into the homework folder. You find assignment two, and there's a PDF file attached that you can download and open. This is it. It's due February five, which is always shown in the. Um, In the course What's home sorry, page calendar. Oh, yeah, fine. If you look on the right hand side, okay. the calendar shows the okay. next okay. word that is due. Okay. And that's February 5, <coughs> 11.59, midnight, just before midnight. Okay. Now, so this is going to be your first serious program. I don't know, if you may have done more serious programs in the lab. You can tell me. But this is about calculating the wind chill factor. Given a temperature and, and wind speed, okay, uh, there is a formula that can be used to calculate the wind chill factor. And you can find out more about wind chill factor and how it's calculated by going to the, the NOAA website. Um, but this is the formula wind chill index um, ah. you need the air temperature the current air temperature multi um, well first you have 35.74 add to that the product of 0.6215 and the air temperature in Fahrenheit and then subtract from that that's the subtraction and if you're wondering about this backslash, that's when you continue on to a second line. What does it have? If it's a long line of code, what does it have? You want to continue to the second line? I'm sorry, I don't Instead of falling off the edge on the right hand side what are you on the asking? screen, um, what's it got um, you can just do a backslash and Three if you hit enter, take it to the next line. Point six two one five uh, times the uh, temperature. Yeah. How come they always slash capitalize that second? Like 35.75 times air temperature? Speed yeah. Why do they capitalize that? Raised to 0.16 okay. Very good question. Slash. I was going to come to that okay. sooner or later, but it's good that you ask me now. Yeah, this is all to do with what we call readability of code. Like Thank I was you. saying, sure. if you name a variable k, you can store the whole world in it. Nobody will notice. Nobody will know will have a clue what it is K represents. So you should have a meaningful name for every variable. And sometimes just one word is not enough. So like WCT index, um, wind chill temperature index. So what you do, the convention, and this is not a requirement, you don't have to do it, 
But it's good practice that you do it, and it's encouraged. If you don't do it, you may lose point. Yeah. <laughs> WCT. You don't capitalize the first word. Ah. You capitalize the subsequent words. So air temperature, air, and then temperature. Okay. And you can you can carry on like okay. um, okay. monthly. What? Sorry. This variable stores the monthly interest rate. Yes. Why is that? Well, Wait, let me one. write it like this. He wrote monthly interest rate concatenated with the I and interest and R and the capital I. Which one is easy to oh, capital I. at one yeah. glance, which one is standing out okay. as to what Do it you is? This word concatenate. Right? He writes capital C. Yeah, this yeah, one. You know what camera face is? Because you're not allowed like to use spaces. You take, by the you way. take a word. Like spaces three, are not two allowed. Two or three words, you put them together, so the but you'll capitalize the yeah, first letter of each word. So it makes to it separate them out. Separate. Uh, to make them stand out. Instead of using spaces. Oh, Instead of using spaces, which are illegal. Well, it doesn't actually. It just separates Another way of doing it is to use underscore. Oh, it just separates them. So you could also write, yeah. and that's also very common among programmers. Monthly underscore what? interest okay. underscore okay. Okay. and okay. all lowercase. Okay. We don't worry about capitalizing, but they separate out the words with underscore. You can. But our this is the style we follow. I don't know which one you like. Um, this is getting becoming more standard. Plus all textbooks encourage this, but most programmers. <coughs> <don't>. <coughs> but like, I was reading, even like if you do all lowercase, it will do the capital. Like it's going to represent something different in the computer. Either way, it's going to be represented as a different. Exactly. Rate. If you write monthly interest rate like this in one line of your code, and then you want to do something with this variable, but next time by mistake you hit the space. Um, key or the cap um, caps lock and one or two characters get capitalized to the Python interpreter it will be a different variable it's case sensitive okay. so Python is case sensitive um, air temperature and air temperature these are two different variables as far as the program is concerned because you know, case difference. And this st style of writing, there's a name for it. It's called camel case. Why is it called camel case? Look at this. Uh, oh. okay. This one? The hump. Because the <laughs> First okay, there are camel with two humps too, by the way. Mm -hmm. So it appears to be. Uh, so one that's called camel case. <coughs> oh, the first letter of each one is capitalized. Right, so it appears to be lumpy. Many of the online Python stuff that you find, <coughs> you'll notice they just use underscore. M many of the what? Online uh, ones? Examples online, mm -hmm. you just use underscore. But in our course, we use um, the camel case. Okay, so this is the formula. So you don't have to work it out. It's there. All you need to do is just write it in code form, and it's already given in code form. Okay? So you just use it? You just use it. You can copy this line and put it in your program as is. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so. Wh what is the formula? It's a long one? <laughs> it yeah. is a long one. Ah. Um, so there are two parts in this program. This assignment. First part, you will have three sets of inputs. One, two, three sets of inputs. That is, in each set or in each pair, you have the temperature in degrees and the wind speed in miles per hour. And given these two values, 
you use this formula to calculate the wind chill temperature index okay and output it and then in the second part the temperature and the wind speed will be typed in by the user at runtime when you run the program ah. okay and so this is what the output will look like I've got a sample output on the last page. So the first um, three combinations, temperature 10 degrees, wind speed 15 miles per hour. Okay. And then it's printing the wind chill temperature index. And then the second pair, temperature 0, wind speed 25. Third pair, temperature minus 10, wind speed 35. And then it goes into part B and asks the user for a temperature in Fahrenheit and a wind speed in miles per hour. And then um, it calculates and outputs the wind chill factor. Okay. So all this in one hook and oh. In one program, yeah. So essentially that's what our should look like? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Except you may type in another temperature or wind speed. So you, what you should do is, like all programmers do, is try to get a simple working version of your program. Keep it simple. Just do part A. See if it works. Yeah, see if it works. And then add part B and test it. If that works too, um, you can then submit. But work on one part at a time, don't try to do yeah, it. Yeah, or you can do part A, if it works, you can submit and then do part B and then submit again with both parts A and B. Okay. All right. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's just practice, just warming up for more, more real, realistic problems later on. Any questions? Any other questions? Yes. I did, but I haven't finished it, okay. and I'm still looking at it. Um, you should get it in a couple of days. Yeah. It should definitely be completed by this weekend. You can work in a pair, in a pair if you want to, or you can work individually. That's how we will we'll, we'll do it. In the lab, you're working on your own, right? Yeah. Actually, well, they give you a choice in the lab thing, actually. Hmm? Yeah. I think they give you a choice in the lab thing, I think. Okay. Now, if there are, well, look at it, have a shot, and then if you have any questions, you can always email me or raise it in the next class. Um, yeah. Rubric says part A implemented correctly, part B documentation, program header comments. Each program should have header comments. This is the header comment. So don't forget this. Don't um, include, make sure you include this. What now? Okay. What's it got? He's got something That's part of the documentation. The some comments. All the comments? Yeah, gotcha. he's got like a set of five that he wants you to add. Okay, let's get back to Python. Oh, you want you to add. 